It's the 2K Sports pregame show. Hello, basketball fans. I'm Ernie Johnson, welcoming you to 2K Sports. I'm here with Kenny the Jet Smith and Shaquille O'Neal. And the pregame warm-ups are wrapping up out in Houston, where it'll be the Rockets going up against the Indiana Pacers. Checking out the Pacers, we've kind of waited and waited for this team to come together and start producing, but it just hasn't happened. And now we've gotten pretty deep into the season, so time's not on their side. And guys, the Houston Rockets can get up and down the floor and score as well as anybody. A big reason, James Harden. Mm. He does just about everything for them at the offensive end of the floor. Well, Doesn't he, Kenny? I'll tell you what. You know, we always knew he was an elite scorer. But now he's passing the basketball, Ernie. His ability to find people has probably opened his game up exponentially on the offensive end. I know you heard this before because I played for a lot of teams, but I played for Dan Tony. Wow. And Harden has showed he can run the offense, and it's flourishing. You know, the challenge for the Rockets is at the defensive end of the floor. Coming up, tip off. Let's go courtside. Kevin Harlan has the call. We've got NBA basketball in store for you here in Houston, Texas, the home of the Rockets, live on 2K Sports. We're happy to have you with us for 2K Sports midweek presentation of NBA basketball. This is Kevin Harlan with Clark Kellogg and Greg Anthony. And giving us the rundown from the sideline, David Aldridge. After this game, the Rockets head back out on the road. This is a game they expect to win. They come into this matchup confident and ready to take care of business. This is a team with high expectations, and they don't end with the regular season. And they've been every bit as good as expected, Greg, rolling through the regular season, and they're gathering momentum. As the postseason grows closer, I would say they'll be dangerous again in the playoffs. And we've got time for a quick pregame report. With that being said, let's head to the sideline in our Hall of Famer, David Aldridge, D.A. Well, guys, Nate McMillan took over as coach of the Pacers last season. Now, his previous head coaching job had been five seasons prior. He said, now, there's a lot of old school in me, but I do understand you have to adapt with this generation of players, the millennials, and how you communicate. And they want to bring that old school discipline to this team. Kevin? Thanks, David. It's great to have a mix of those things, adapt or die, as they say. And it should be a high-paced game tonight as both of these teams, Clark, thrive in the open floor. So with that being said, what makes these teams so good on the break? Well, you're right, Kevin. They do thrive in the open court. Excellent transition teams because they push the ball and they really have a conscious effort to run the floor at every opportunity. That's what makes fast break teams hard to beat is because they're running all the time. And that doesn't give your defense a lot of time to set up. We've got a chance here to set the floor courtesy of Gatorade. All fueled up and ready to go for this one. On the court for Indiana. Young and Turner up front. Collison and Oladipo pair at the one and the two. And it's Bogdanovich in at the three. And stolen by Bogdanovich. And Young kicks to Collison over Paul. A tad short, but it's good off the front iron. Collison's got the first points of the night for the Pacers. Collison showing good concentration there. Never took his eyes off the target. Anderson wide open. It's rebounded by Indiana. Last game matched up with the Magic. Tough loss there. Well, listen, I I've seen worse performances offensively, but no doubt that group was inconsistent. For sure. Agree with you there. They just didn't have it. Seemed like they were a step behind and out of sync. Oof, that is a tough shot. Screen by Capella. Harden gets to a reason. Screen by Capella. And he drops in the way up off the glass. Love how Capella stays alert on the offensive board, creating second chance opportunities thanks to that activity. 
Ball against Collison. The feed to Turner. The kick out to Young. Just five to shoot. Oh, and the dunk by Young. No doubt about it on that finish by Young. Here's Paul. We saw him with 19 points his last outing. And about two minutes played here in the first quarter. Harden kicks to Paul. Down to five on the shot clock. Here's Ariza. He can't hit that time. Ready by Bogdanovich. Pacers have gotten their first three shots to go in for him to start off this game. Outside Turner passes to Oladipo. Fires from deep. Rockets with the rebound. They went to Indiana for their last meeting with the Pacers and came out with a win. And the previous meeting was a win for them and a huge day for the bench. The reserves really stepped it up with their scoring. Greg, we know how important it is when you can go to your reserves without much drop-off in production. It gives you a big advantage. I know they'd love to see that again tonight. Now, here's Oladipo following the shot by Chris Paul. Collison, the pass to Oladipo. And here we go. Fast break. Paul's got it. And Harden with the basket on the assist by Paul. Now, you got to remember that Harden has a quick trigger. Staple gun quick. This guy is looking to score as soon as the ball touches his hands. Now, here's Collison. He's coming off a 25-point game against Orlando. And you know, Kevin, his creativity really on display that night. I mean, he was threading beautiful passes everywhere. So close to getting the block there. You, you can live with those calls because you'd rather have a guy playing aggressive instead of playing it safe. Here is Harden. 17 points for him last game against Brooklyn. Capella inside. Turner covering. That one goes in. You know, Capella's really hard to deal with inside, especially inside. Does a nice job using his size to get that shot off. Now, here's Collison. He's been a reliable scorer for him as he's averaging up over 13 points a game. Well, Darren Collison going through the free agency process this last summer. Greg, Indiana jumped at the chance to add him to the roster. Yeah, and with Collison, his ability to play in so many ways, that, that is what made teams go after him. He doesn't always take a big signing to change the complexity of a team. Getting solid contributors like Collison go a long way in building the foundation of a team. First one falls for him. And when you watch this Rockets team, you can see just how explosive they are on the offensive end. Almost everyone on the floor can hurt you from deep, and they all know their role and execute it to a tee. So he gets them both. And what an advantage. You really feel like you can always trust him when he's at the line. Paul against Collison. Paul dishes to Harden. He feeds it to a reason. Anderson the screen. From 12 feet out, that one misses. Good defensive work there by Young. And last season, the Rockets' offense was incredible. Then they go and add Chris Paul. They can run a team off the floor if they get hot. Two great playmakers in Paul and Harden. And making a move for Paul made a lot of teams fear what the Rockets can do now on offense. A fantastic heads-up play there from Young to find the open man. Harden against Oladipo. Harden kicks to Paul. Over Collison, and it's Paul missing. Pacers leading by seven. The drive by Collison makes it off the glass. Collison's got eight points. Sensing the opportunity there, Collison sneaking inside for the finish. 
Hall with the ball. Wyatt so far offensively searching for his first points of the game. Another miss by Houston. And he didn't punish them for the weak coverage there, but they can't count on him to continue missing. Young. A chance to extend the lead to double digits, but it's no good. They could use a big shot here to get this offense going. Too many empty possessions. Right now, they need a basket. And Clint Capella is going to pick up a foul. That's foul number two for him. I think he's going to have to be more cautious on defense. He can't afford to pick up a third foul here in the first quarter. Nene, he's checked in for Houston. It's Bogdanovich on the wing. Young, a screen on Harden. And the rejection by Harden. Over in the corner, Paul. And some nice passing there by Houston. No one covering. Rapid fire release from Ariza like a staple gun. Boom, boom. Outstanding at shooting as soon as the pass gets to his hands. And Turner throws it down. Oh. Oh, inflicting some punishment with the two-hand flush. Ah, they're going for the throat. Now's the time to do it. Keep attacking that rim. Here is Harden following the score by Indiana. Kicks it to Paul. On the top of the key, good. Outstanding presence of mind. Harden is constantly looking for the open shooter. Last outing for Houston, it was a loss to the Brooklyn Nets. Man, that was a stinker. I mean, that's one of those games where you really can't find anything that they did well. The game just got out of hand and really just a shaky performance across the board. Yeah, and I'd have to agree with you. And, he, and you know how optimistic and positive I am. But it's hard for me to find anything positive to take away from that. And that's a game you just want to forget about as soon as you can. And Houston calls their first time out of the game. And you see Bogdanovich, six foot eight at times, listed at shooting guard. GA, is he a two? No. If anything, I, I think he's often better defending power forwards than he is against the wings, in part because you're not going to look to post that position in the way the game is played today. This guy is skilled and tough, but doesn't have the great foot speed defensively, so I think that's to his advantage to guard those guys. Looking at who's out there now for the Rockets. And Bahamute's checked in for Anderson. P.J. Tucker comes in for Trevor Ariza. Green, he's checked in for James Harden. And Gordon subbed in for Paul. Indiana leading by 10. Here's Joseph. Taking a look at his numbers, he averages about seven points a game. Screen by Jefferson. Kicks it out to Stevenson. Off target with his three. And the foul on Al Jefferson. That is his first foul of the game. Houston's gone 0 of 2 from deep here. Gordon against Joseph. Gordon kicks to Amba Amute. And here's Tucker. The dish to Nene. Six on the shot clock. They kick it out to Green. And they've had chances to score inside, just unable to convert. Yeah, you know, defense or not, good defense or not, those are shots you got to make. I mean, they're missing some easy ones. Jefferson setting the pick for Robinson. And finished off by Robinson. Uh, you know, this is exactly why Jefferson gets involved in screening. I mean, his big body allows his teammates the space they need to do their damage. Now here's Gordon. Still getting warmed up offensively. No buckets yet in the game for him. And guarding him on the perimeter isn't a priority for them right now, but if this continues, it will be. And here are the Pacers now after the Rockets pick up three. Screen by Jefferson. Joseph, the pass to Turner. Outside Robinson. Screen by Jefferson. And he was fouled on the way up. Two free throws now for him. 
We know that getting to the free throw line is almost a skill into itself, Clark. Which players are elite in your mind in their ability to draw content? Well, Kevin, one of the first guys that comes to mind is James Harden and Russell Westbrook would be another. So good at attacking the defense, putting their bodies into the defender. And because of that, they make it hard for the defenders to guard them without fouling. But those two guys come to mind right away in having that skill of drawing fouls. And that one falls for Robinson. And a big front office change for the Pacers over the summer. Uh, cause for concern? No, I don't think so, Kevin. Very experienced hands are taking over. And I think it'll be a relatively smooth transition for the Pacers. That one misses. Rockets trail by 10. In the corner, it's Gordon. And another three for Houston. Good quickness on the catch and shoot. Gordon giving the defense no time to react off the pass. Screen by Jefferson. Here's Joseph. Hit the line by Indiana. Second chance shot. It's blocked. And they're able to recover. No good that time. Gordon with the defensive effort. Now Green has to Mba Amute. On the wing, Gordon. Screen by Baamute. Stolen by Robinson. Tries it from nine. Stevenson can't hit. When he's got that kind of positioning, he's got to score it. Got to score the ball from there. And Tucker kicks to Gordon. Tucker dishes to Green. And Baamute, the pass to Nene. And some nice passing there by Houston. Just five to shoot. And it's Gordon penetrating. A putback. They shoot again. It's stolen by Jefferson. Outside Turner. Back to Jefferson. Some solid defense there by Nene. Rockets trail by seven. Green inside the three-point line. Here is Mba Mute. Tries yet again, and that basket's going to count, folks. Gets the goaltending call right there. So close to getting the block there. You, you can live with those calls because you'd rather have a guy playing aggressive instead of playing it safe. And Indiana making a change here. Sabonis has checked in. One shot. Free throw, Mba Amute. Good. And you ask any Houston fan who the greatest player in the history of their franchise is, and they all say Akeem Olajuwon. Clark, you played against Olajuwon. Just how great a player was he? And what does he mean to this Rockets franchise today? Well, he was special. A first ballot Hall of Famer brought the only titles in franchise history to the Rockets and could do everything you want from a big guy. Graceful, strong, a presence defensively and on the glass, unselfish. They called him Akeem the Dream for good reason. That too was a dream to play with and a nightmare for opponents. That one falls for Robinson. And Paul George traded away by the Pacers over the summer. A move they didn't want to make, but the writing was on the wall. You know what? It's always hard, Kevin, to lose a superstar player. But the Pacers had really been unable to create a contender around Paul George. And therefore, they had to trade him because they didn't think he was going to sign. As a matter of fact, he clearly stated he would not re-sign at the end of his contract with the Pacers. So traded to OKC. And Paul George still intrigued by the possibility of maybe 
playing for his hometown Lakers at the end of his contract. Now here's Gordon. Last time out he had 13 points. Over Robinson. That one off the back iron and out. They've been sensational on the backboard to start this game. Yeah, sensational is a really good word for it, Greg. They're tearing it up on the glass. And anytime you think about the Pacers, it's really hard to forget their recent dominance in the East now. I mean, in 2013, they were one win away from the NBA Finals. In 14, they earned the number one seed in the East, and then it kind of snowballed south since then. First free throw is good. And for the Pacers, two consecutive trips to the Eastern Conference Finals, they seem poised for a long run. Clark, what happened? Well, they changed direction. They had three all-star caliber players in Lance Stevenson, Roy Hibbert, and Paul George. And David West was an anchor of that team as well. Stevenson left. The league seemed to figure out Hibbert. And PG broke his leg. And just like that, their fortunes changed. And I think, too, the way the league was changing in terms of style of play impacted the decision too. No doubt he's struggling right now from the field. Let's see if he can get it going this quarter. Robinson sets a screen for Stevenson. Outside for Jefferson. Now the pass to Joseph. Over Gordon. Shot by Joseph. No good. Rockets trail by seven. Here's Green. And Abamute kicks to Gordon. Fifteen seconds left to play in the first quarter. Excellent G that time from Robinson. Stevenson outside. Shoots over Tucker. And it would have counted had it fallen, but it's offline. And we've reached the end of the first quarter. Indiana out in front, up by seven. We'll be back shortly live from Houston, Texas. And you talk to Chris Paul, and it's clear he was born to play the point guard position. Fortunately, I've always been vertically challenged, so I've never had to play power forward or center on anybody's team. I've been passing and getting into the lane, dishing the ball off to a teammate, helping people score my entire career. <laughs> vertically challenged, that's classic coming from Chris Paul. But, you know, seriously, Greg, he's taken that challenge and made the most of what he's got a terrific play it really and, and you know what he's actually turned that challenge on his head when he when he goes right at much bigger players and, and uses their size against them and the first quarter is in the books second about ready to get underway and when you consider how the Pacers are doing, guys, what do you think? Just playing suffocating defense. That, that's been the difference here for them. You know, Greg, I love watching this team get after it on defense. I mean, they play with a bit of edge and nastiness. They've got P.J. Tucker. Green is out there with Gordon. Then there's Rene. And it's Mba Amute in at the four spot. That's the group starting the second quarter for the Rockets. Now here's Joseph. Three from Stevenson. And he's good on the three ball. Stevenson's got the second quarter going with the first basket of the period for the Pacers. Nene, the screen. Green kicks to Gordon. Pulls it from the elbow. And that one goes long. Well, you, you see the struggles he's having getting anything to go. Yeah, I'm sure he's frustrated, Greg, because nothing is falling right now. But he's going to keep chipping away at it and that's the attitude. Stay with it. Now, here's Joseph. After Eric Gordon's miss, bucket is good. Joseph's got the lead up to 12 now for the Pacers. 
and some guys just have a nose for scoring, and this one couldn't have been any easier. Yeah, that was actually no defense at all there, Greg. I mean, layups don't come any easier than that. I mean, they're piling it on now. Shots good by Green. Where was the defense? Come on now. Where was it? No idea how they gave up that open look. Second quarter of play with around two minutes gone so far. Here's Joseph. Got a hand on it. Now here's Tucker. He's guarded by Stevenson. And the wide open shot from Green. Green missing again. You know, he's been off so far, Kevin, but there's still time. I mean, he just needs to settle it down, idle it down a little bit, and try to contribute as much as he can on the offense within himself. Robinson misses. And you can see the defender's afraid to kind of get in his way a lot of times when he's on his way to the basket. But on that one, they were there. Now, here's Joseph. We're just over two and a half minutes into the second quarter. Pass to Jefferson. He can't get that one to fall. So Houston will take it the other way. Well, they've got the Lakers ahead of them after this game. In their next game, it'll be played in Los Angeles. It's game one of a three-game road trip. And Tucker kicks to Mba Amute. Outside, Green. Panay setting the pick for Green. Hands it from downtown. Green's got a couple of three-pointers in the second for Houston. Well, I like the first quarter he had. I mean, and I'm loving the second quarter even more. Playing with a lot of momentum right now. So the Pacers call timeout their first of the game. And Clark, when you were growing up, was there one player in pro basketball you tried to emulate or model your game after? I really didn't pattern my game after any particular player. I tried to piece and parcel from a lot of players. I love the gracefulness of Lou Alcindor, now known as Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, when I first saw him back in the late 60s at his size and the way he could move and his touch was impressive and then as I became more of a forward in high school he looked at guys like Magic Johnson and I looked at Marcus Johnson out at UCLA Dr. J was a versatile forward as well George McGinnis who ended up becoming a really good friend of mine um, as I got drafted by the Pacers those guys that were big and mobile and had ball skills and shooting skills and rebounded those were guys that I tried to play like. It's stolen by Capella. The 11-footer. And Oladipo pulls it down. Has to be disappointing seeing him miss that one, Kevin. I mean, the defense wasn't bad, but still, I think he needs to convert from there. Lays it up off the glass. Oladipo's got his second basket. They are just killing them on the interior. Yeah, you can't say that with enough emphasis. I mean, the defenders are just not being aggressive enough down low. You got to play with some physicality in the paint. Now, here's Paul. He's certainly been a consistent piece of their offense, averaging about 14 and a half points a game. Over Collison. Paul can't get it to go. Not sure what, what the D was doing there. Clearly a breakdown. You can ill afford to give a guy like him that good a look. Yep, that one goes on the perimeter and on the inside, too. Bogdanovich able to put points on the board. Paul passes to Capella. He dishes it to Harden. It's stolen by Oladipo. Sabonis kicks to Oladipo to the inside. They get it back. Here's Young. Goes up and lays it nice and easy. And now a 12-point pacer lead. And guys, let's get your take on the hustle stats for Indiana. And it's been about their defense. They're playing with a frenetic pace, putting a lot of pressure on the ball handlers and forcing turnovers. The other thing that's helped them early tonight are the points they've been able to convert off turnovers. And, and you just hate to give up those second chance points. Yeah, those are back crushers. I mean, they really crack your back when you give teams second shots like that. Collison kicks to Oladipo. Over Harden. The shot off that time. Paul with the defensive effort. Harden with it. Now defended by Oladipo. And watching James Harden, the, the amount of shots he is able to create for himself and his teammates 
Uh, he just does so much from his position that is unrivaled. One of the greatest offensive threats, not only today, but really of the last decade. The Rockets shooting their second and third shots at the line right here. You've got to appreciate their ability to make free throws, 81% as a team. And, guys, that's really an upgrade over how they shot last season. Two Not shots. a huge upgrade, but an upgrade nonetheless. The first one falls. And for Harden, he's been in the conversation, Greg, for MVP for several years. The way he's able to just carry an offense with his creativity garners attention. And, and Kevin, I, I think he might have won it last year if it wasn't for the amazing season put in by Russell Westbrook. Don't count Harden out, though. He's such a unique talent on offense. Maybe this will be his year to bring home that MVP award. And Clark, this Houston team is so good at moving the ball around. Top three in assists last season. And they know how to get a good shot. There's no doubt about that. Just keeping the defense following the ball, moving them side to side, keeping them on the move. How does that affect team chemistry? I think it does wonders for team chemistry, Kevin, because everybody's happy. They're enjoying touching the ball, getting shots, playing at a fast pace. It's certainly fun for us to watch and for the fans to watch. And I think it helps to recruit other good players who enjoy watching that style and wanting to be part of it. Now a timeout called by Houston. Yeah, he, he's got to make some adjustments here. Just too easy to score in the lane against them right now. Yeah, there's no reason why they should be scoring at will down there easily as they have. I mean, they've got to be more aggressive inside. And if you're wondering where the points are coming from here tonight, here's a breakdown in the scoring between the front court and back court tonight for the Rockets. And their guards really have done what they could to keep it close. What little offense they've been able to generate has come from the backcourt. They just need a little more balance. Now here's Paul. Feeds it to Ariza. Dishes to Harden. Off the screen. The rebound by Turner. Turner's got his fifth rebound right now in the game. The kick out to Oladipo. The shot, no good. And Houston the other way now. Here's Harden. The rebound by Turner. Turner's got his sixth rebound on the night. And oh boy, a lot of contact there, but he gets the call and will shoot two. It's going to be on James Harden. Oladipo has become a very efficient combo guard. Somebody who can score the ball at a high clip as well as get the ball to open teammates when necessary. Pacers have gone six of eight from the free throw line tonight. That one is off. And Oladipo has some parts of his game that needs work, but he is certainly terrific on the big finish. Yeah, I mean, he's got longer arms than you would think for a player of his size. And the overall physical skill set, there's no doubt about it. You know, you look at his ability to just stay floating in the air for that extra moment when he's in attack mode. And this is a young man that still has his best basketball ahead of him. And the Pacers have made the playoffs back-to-back -back seasons and have only missed the playoffs once in the last seven seasons, including a couple of trips to the Eastern Conference Finals. Nevertheless, there's a growing concern in Indy that the team has stagnated a bit and needs to move forward at a greater pace than what they have. And for the Pacers, two consecutive seasons making the playoffs as the seventh seed. Both times Clark knocked out in the first round. Yeah, and, you know, last season got swept by the Cavs, and Game 3 gave up the largest second-half comeback in NBA history, a game the Pacers should have won. Shooting two. And certainly not the way they hoped to finish. And he can't get the first one. Well, I tell you what, it's really impressive how Capella 
has improved his role so quickly, Kevin. I mean, he's a starting caliber center known for his defense, but continues to make strides on offense, too. And Clark, a lot of former players had a specific instance when they knew they were special, the way they played the game of basketball. Did you ever have a moment like that where you realized that you could make it as a player? Yeah, there was a time when that became more realistic to me, Kevin. And I grew up in Cleveland, and during the summers, a lot of the Cleveland Cavaliers would stay in the area and play pickup basketball to stay in shape. And I got a chance to bump heads with a lot of those guys, Jim Jones and the late Terry Furlow, Austin Carr, um, Bingo Smith, Mike Mitchell. And I was only 15, 16 years old. And while those guys were going at half speed, it gave me the encouragement that I might be able to get to where they were if I continued to work hard and stay healthy. So at 15 or 16, during one of those summers, I began to realize that I might have a chance to realize the dream of being an NBA. Here's Bogdanovich. James Harden picking up that last basket. Ariza with it. 14 points from him the last game against Brooklyn. Great look, but off the mark. Can't get more open than that. No idea how he missed time that mid-range shot. Maybe he was too open. He had stolen by Capella. Ariza with it. Picked up by Collison. Again, the miss by Harden. Man, right play, wrong result on that one. Generally, you knock those down. Not much else you can do there. I mean, that's what you want. Too bad they weren't able to finish it off. Well, you take a look at this Houston Rockets offense. They've got so many threats, and Harden is clearly the big one. He's in the middle of it all, and his teammates do a nice job of playing off of him. He misses the free throw. And Clark, so much of the offensive burden has fallen on the shoulders of Harden. Now he's got some help, certainly, with Chris Paul. You know what? As well as Harden played last season at the point guard spot, I think this trade was just too good to pass up. I mean, I anticipate they're going to make one heck of a duo. And the second free throw, good. Rockets trail by 11. And they double up Paul. And some nice passing there by Houston. Harden dishes to Paul. Over Collison. Hits the front of the rim and out. I mean, his field goal percentage isn't good. He's not helping his team out there shooting this poorly. Count that one. Young's got six here in this quarter. When you put Young on the floor, those are the breaks you're looking for. I mean, few can keep up with him at his position. He's got great speed. Paul outside over Collison. The Rockets again can't hit. And the stroke definitely lacking confidence this quarter. Nothing on target. He kicks to Oladipo from the arc. That shot misses. The Rockets go the other way with it. They've been looking out of sync offensively. Yeah, the, the, their offense has ground to a standstill. Reza passes to Anderson over Young. Anderson can't get it to go. Indiana leading by 13. Oladipo goes in. And a lot of contact on that one, so he'll shoot two here. A moment now to see the numbers for Capella. Just an incredible month of basketball. He's putting up about 16 points a game, 19 rebounds, and, and almost three blocks. And he's such a big presence for them on the inside. Yeah, whether it's sending shots back airmail or cleaning the glass, he's the total package. The first one falls for him. And, you know, with Nate McMillan taking over the Pacers last season, their offense was much improved. He had a good stint as a head coach in both Seattle and Portland. But there was some slippage defensively with the Pacers, and now it's about striking the right balance between offensive prowess and defensive improvement.
Oladipo hits them both. And the Pacers, Clark looking to up the pace. In some ways, that made McMillan a surprising choice. His teams in Portland, for instance, some of the slowest in the league. Well, their pace actually went down some, um, Kevin. Uh, McMillan is accustomed to going small with shooting big men, and, and that certainly fits. The Pacers making a change here. Stevenson's checked in. Rockets trail by 15. The three from Harden. Pacers with the rebound. Young's got three rebounds now in this one. And Joseph kicks to Turner. And it's in there. Turner's got eight points. Exceptional skills for Turner down in the paint. This guy, I think, has the potential to be a dominant player inside for a lot of years. Houston's gone two of four from three-point range so far in the second quarter. And there's a whistle that goes on Corey Joseph. That is his first foul of the game. And the Rockets making a change here. Gordon's checked in. Rocket six. Lob pass to Capella. Oh, a nice defensive play to disrupt the alley-oop. Here's Stevenson. And Turner kicks to Bogdanovich. Jacks up a three. Rockets with the rebound. Oh, and a fast break for the Rockets. Gordon's running. Right on the bucket. That's ten points for James Harden. They're getting theirs before the defense can set up. Perfect execution. That's how you take advantage of a transition opportunity. Now, here's Stevenson. Looking at his numbers, he averages a bit over nine points a game. He got right to the cup using that screen. He has five. Not a lot of resistance on the inside, and they're taking full advantage. Greg, the play in the paint has gone almost entirely all their way. Here's Harden, and two free throws coming up, unable to get that one to go with all the contact. It's going to be on Miles' turn. Love the ferocity. Heck, that's one of my favorite words, ferocity. Harden, excellent at accelerating and decelerating. That's the thing that makes him so tough. He can go fast, slow, or mid-range speed. Shooting two. And the first one drops. Well, across the board last season, James Harden, Greg, saw his numbers jump through the roof, but he showed improvement both in his defensive engagement as well as his rebounding. Not something that a lot of us saw coming. Yeah, that's a good point. And with Harden, I think the rebounding is the really surprising number. Went from being an average rebounding guard to a great one the last few seasons. He's been showing more of a dedication to all aspects of the game. And working, Kevin, themselves to the line here in the second. A nice way to get your offense going. And maybe cause some foul trouble along the way as well. And we know what that can do. It pays off typically in good fashion for you. Bogdanovich, no luck. Rockets trail by 15. Here's Tucker. Gets the three-pointer to fall. Tucker's got his first three points of the game. No excuse for that kind of defense. I'm positive they're upset about that. Joseph dishes to Young. In the corner, it's Stevenson. Young passes to Joseph. Scores for only the second time tonight. Now two for six from the field. If you're going in amongst the trees, you have got to be aggressive. Boy, like his intensity, Greg. He's not afraid to take it straight to the rack on the bigger defender. Right at it. Here's Gordon. Harden outside. What a play. He simply drains it in at the buzzer. And money to end the quarter there with the triple. They knew exactly what they wanted to do right there, Greg, and the timing was right on time. And so it's Indiana holding on to an 11-point cushion as we get ready to take a break. They have made it very tough to get a shot off against them. Their defense has been stifling. And a chance now to send it over to David Aldridge standing by courtside. David. 
Thanks a lot. High turnovers in the first half, James. I'm sure that ball security will be a focus in the second half. Uh, yeah, that's still too many turnovers, uh, especially on force uh, turnovers. So we got to really lock in on our, on our turnovers, make, a, make the right play at all times. James, thanks for the time. Back to you, Kevin. Okay, David, much appreciated. And now time for halftime. So we'll be back in just a bit to get the third quarter underway. And now, the 2K Sports Halftime Welcome Show. Welcome back, folks. Ernie Johnson here along with Kenny the Jet Smith and Shaquille O'Neal. We're going to break down all the action from the first half. The story early on was Darren Collison, who was on fire. He had eight points and four assists. And uh, Shaq, what did you see out there from the Pacers? I like their commitment to that inside game. Boy, get it inside to the post. Got to be scoring in the post, splashing to the basket. Just shoot the high percentage shot. No jumpers, no threes. They're being a more aggressive team, the more physical team. They're definitely going to win this game, Ernie. How about you, Kenny? What did you think about Houston? Well, they're trailing in this game because they're shooting under 35%. Now, I've got to give a lot of credit to the defense, forcing the shooters off their spots and making them feel uncomfortable. But if someone takes something away from you, you have to be able to adapt. So they need a whole new game plan because right now they're in trouble. And that is just about going to wrap it up as the second half is moments away. Down to Kevin Harlan and the rest of the crew. Day turning tonight here in the Southwest. We're in Houston. Welcome back, everyone. Welcome back, everyone, to the start of the second half. Big margin on our hands, but we'll see if that gap narrows down in the third and fourth quarters. One of the stories here, James Harden getting it done today. His points production thus far off the charts. It's only been two quarters. Just a great effort for him for the entire half. Yeah, and it doesn't matter where he is on the floor either, Greg. He's making it look very easy. He's looking to score the ball. And it's the Pacers with the ball. 17 points was their biggest margin. And so in the game for the Pacers. Collison and Oladipo pair at the one and the two. Young and Turner up front. And it's Bogdanovich in at the small forward position. Spotting the open man, Collison, a capable playmaker. Paul against Collison. Screen by Capella. Paul kicks to a reason. And a great assist by Paul as that one goes in. Paul's got three assists in the game. Indiana leading by 11. And here's Collison. Turner with a screen on Paul. The drive by Collison, and Capella sends it back. And every season, Capella has improved as a shot blocker. Timing, awareness, recognition. He's really good at erasing shot attempts. Now, here is Harden. No good there, and that would have cut it to single digits. Oladipo against Harden. And it's going to be two free throws. Drew contact on the shot. Sometimes it's about presence, and Oladipo has it. Really willing himself to the line and going right into the defense that time. He forced the foul. The Pacers have made 10 of their 14 tries at the free throw line in the game. Gentlemen, two shots. Two shots. That free throw good from Oladipo. And that's good as he hits both of his shots. Rockets trail by 13. The feed now to Ariza. 
Third quarter of basketball, about a minute and a half in. Screen by Capella. And again, the Rockets good for two. Well, I tell you what, that's a shot Chris Paul is really comfortable with. I mean, if he gets the space to rise up from mid-range, he's going to bury that. Now, here's Collison. He's got eight up off the screen. Good work defensively by Capella. Here's Harden. Goes back up. That's in, and the Pacer lead is cut to just nine on the basket from Capella. The tenacity on that interior, just battling, bringing that effort and will for second chance points. Turner with the screen. Oh, Turner in position, and stolen by Ariza. And here comes Ariza, leading the fast break. Launches the three. Paul's shot is off. Pacers leading by nine. Outside Collison. Ariza against Bogdanovich. Here's Turner right through the D for the layup. Turner's got 10. No doubt about the consistency when it comes to scoring the basketball for him tonight. A real nice lift for their offense. Now a timeout called by Houston. Yeah, you know, some of it's shot selection, some just bad luck, and they just can't get anything going. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, they've been a bit unlucky. Some of it is poor shot selection in a slump, no doubt. Um, but it can be turned around. They just need to find ways to score the ball. Catching up on the changes now for Indiana. Jefferson's checked in for Miles Turner. Zabonis comes in for Young. And Glenn Robinson the third is subbed in for Bogdanovich. Now here's Ariza. Five points in the game. Stolen by Collison. Here we go, one-on-one. -on -one. Here's Robinson. Ariza with the rebound. Rockets trail by 11. Paul outside. Over Collison. Another miss by Houston. And low percentage look on that one. Not sure what he was thinking. I agree with you. Not a good shot. Not good offense. They can get a much better look than that. But they're going to need to be patient to do so. You know, one of the great strengths of Coach D'Antoni, to me, Kevin, is he really gives his players a lot of confidence. And his philosophy really clicks with players. They're comfortable playing for him. They know their responsibilities, and they play hard for D'Antoni. Now, gentlemen, two shots. Two shots. The free throw drops for Oladipo. And to what you said about Mike D'Antoni, he sees his players and asks, what can they do instead of what can't you do? And, you know, he's had a lot of success last season elevating the Rockets and winning Coach of the Year in the process. Houston making a switch here. Green's checked in. He makes one of two that time. Ryan Anderson was a free agent before coming to the Rockets. When he was meeting with teams, he saw all the open looks that Houston players were getting from outside, and he wanted to be a part of that. Worked out pretty well, I think, for him. I don't think you can deny that at all. I mean, perfect. Hand in glove is what this fit was for Anderson, and he knew that. Uh, the way Houston plays, perfect for what Ryan Anderson brings to the table. He's great from the corner or wing and is deadly as a shooter when he has space. Here's Green after Al Jefferson's score. Capella with it. Jefferson picks him up. Paul, no one around him. And another three for Houston. And they're getting their points now almost exclusively from the triple. Four of their last five makes are from beyond the arc. And Greg, it's hard for me to watch this. I mean, the defense practically giving them those shots. And the basket by Collison. And defensively, guys, they've been unable to shut down the middle. Yeah, and they're really getting pummeled on points in the paint here. Paul kicks to a reason. To the left wing, wide open. And it's Anderson that time on the assist by Ariza. 
Ariza's got his third assist on the night. And good passing, setting up a lot of these buckets right now, Kevin. That's been the key. Dime dropping delights is what I call it. I, that is a nice pass. I will give you that one. Yeah, he was on the money, that's no doubt. Oladipo dishes to Collison. And a miss there on the triple. Buckets trail by eight. It's Ariza on the wing, guarded by Oladipo. Ariza against Oladipo. Anderson with the screen for Ariza. They kick it out to Green. And another three for Houston. And all of a sudden, that three puts them in striking distance, guys. He's had that shot working all night. You bet he has. I mean, working overtime. The triple's been his bread and butter in this ball game. Nothing but butter. Sweet butter. And he gets contact and the whistle on the shot. Two shots coming up. Let's use this break in the action to show you the teams that in the last 10 games have been the NBA's best fast break teams. In third, the Rockets. I mean, no doubt for me that they, they've hit their stride the last few weeks. I mean, they are punishing the defenses with that up-tempo style. Now, gentlemen, two shots. Two shots. That one is off. I look at Sabonis as a terrific stretch four. He's a guy who can play either power forward or center, and he has excellent length and a nice touch. And the second free throw, good. Rockets trail by six. Green with the ball. Now defended by Oladipo. Green the pass to Paul. Here's Ariza. Off target from three-point range. Indiana's gone one of two from beyond the arc since coming out of the break. Passes it to Collison. And the layup's good off the glass. Collison's got four points this quarter. That's all willpower and fight right there. Darren Collison finishing amidst the tall timber. Well done. Green kicks to Capella. Green the screen. Down to five on the shot clock. A three ball. Good, and Paul gets the assist. Paul's got five assists in the game. And defensively, you have got to extend to their shooters. They have been on fire this half. Well, you know, the D just hasn't been there for real. I mean, these shooters are getting any perimeter shot they want. It's a bunch of warm-up jump shots out there. Puts it up from 12. Here's Jefferson. Second shot opportunity. Green with the rebound. Those are chances almost always you can rely on him to get you two points. But the D, just enough to keep him out of rhythm. Here's Ariza. Foul call that time on the way up. That'll give him two chances at the free throw line here. The well-seasoned Ariza continues to make a difference. I mean, this veteran is a reliable scorer and a quality, quality defender. And a moment to look at the scoring approach in terms of where the points are coming from for the Pacers. Anytime you get as many points in the paint as they have, you know you've got a good thing going and you just want to keep it going. Yeah, and the other thing that they've done well is they've really attacked the gaps of the defense with quick, decisive drives down the lane. First free throw is good. Yeah, you chronicle the career of Trevor Ariza. You know, he came into the league primarily as a slasher and transition scorer and a good defender. He's done a nice job reinventing his game as he's gotten older. And now he's much more of a 3 and D type player impacting both ends of the floor. Looking at who's out there now for the Rockets. Nene, he's checked in for Capella. P.J. Tucker comes in for Anderson. And it's Gordon in for Chris Paul. Now here's Joseph. He has five. To the middle, Jefferson. It's tipped. Ariza, right side. And the shot no good, a bit short. And Ariza is certainly Clark of the 3 and D mold as a veteran. 
That is often uh, what players on the perimeter need to do is their athleticism starts to decline. Yeah, no doubt about it. Ariza can still run the floor and occasionally punch it down on you. There's no question about that. You know, it's just now the bulk of his contributions come off knocking down threes. He's had a very long and productive career and has really done a nice job of adapting to whatever his team needs from him. Pacers leading by six. Stevenson outside. He feeds it to Joseph. It's deflected. Fires top of the key. Will not go. This is off the front iron. Indiana's gone 5 of 10 from downtown tonight. 50% exactly. Screen by Jefferson. Here's Stevenson. And no good that time. Gordon with the defensive effort. Rockets trail by six. They've been looking out of sync offensively. Yeah, the, the, their offense has ground to a standstill. On the wing, Green. Drains it from beyond the arc. Green's got nine points here in the second half. Three triples in the first half. Three in the second. Boy, do they add up. Joseph up top, defended by Gordon, but they'll get another chance. And the foul on Al Jefferson. That's foul number two for him. And Bahamute's checked in for Trevor Ariza. Turner's checked in for the Pacers. Young comes in for Demonis Sabonis. And guys, they look to set it up in the half court. Well, that's when you got to rely more on your defense and try to get out in the open floor. Oftentimes, you can develop your rhythm offensively when you get easy baskets. And we take a look here at the shot chart for the Rockets. And there isn't a whole lot of positive that you can take away from his performance from the mid-range game so far. A lot of chances have come up empty for him, but he seems intent on taking jumpers out there. Something's got to give. And the first one drops. You know, starting out in the D League, then bouncing around the international circuit, Tucker took the long, hard road to get here. Bogdanovich just checked in for Indiana. That's also good. So he hits both free throws. Indiana leading. Now Joseph, five points in the game. Kicks it to Young. Back to Joseph. Shot clock at six. Some nice passing here by Indiana. Here's Stevenson. And once again, off the mark by Indiana. The game has been very close in a lot of areas. The rebounding has been the one differentiator thus far. And, Greg, we've seen it time and time again in games. Effort and determination on the glass can make up for a lot of other weaknesses. And the Pacers with possession here, following the score by Houston. Beautiful dish, and the layup goes down. Ten points for Boyan Bogdanovich. The size and the focus, that's the big thing, to finish it over the defense. Bogdanovich showing exactly what he can do. Gordon kicks to Nene. Amute is screen on turn. There's a screen for three. Gordon. Bogdanovich grabs the miss. Bogdanovich has got three rebounds so far in the game. We've got 128 left in the third quarter of the game, and he converts the layup. And after really leaning on that three-point shot in the first half, seeming like they're uh, just getting away from it here in the second. More of the shots coming from the interior. Now here's Gordon, and he can be counted on to put some points on the board every night. He's averaging right around 13 and a half points a game. Stevenson, it's not going to go for him. Great T that time from Green. And there's Eric Gordon on the assist by Green. Gordon's got his second bucket of the night. 
and the offense has just operated really smoothly here in the open floor. Yeah, and for them to reduce the lead, they should keep the pace brisk. I mean, that's how they've generated the highest quality shots. Young from outside. Here's Turner, and it's slammed in by Turner. Boy, how about the determination of Turner? I mean, he's a wrecking ball on the glass on both ends of the floor. Just doesn't give up on plays. And Green slams it in. How about battling through the impact there and then willing that basketball in? Boy, it does your heart good to see that kind of determination in a player. Really excellent focus that time. And this is his first trip to the line tonight. And a year ago, he was an 80% shooter at the line, so that's more than acceptable. Yeah, that's a great asset to have, guys, um, for any team. Coming down the stretch in close games, you've got a guy who's confident and very good at the line. When he steps up there, you feel good about him. Free throw, no good for Green. And, you know, Miles Turner, a five-star recruit coming out of Trinity High School near Dallas, was Big 12 Freshman of the Year at the University of Texas, and he keeps working, and he's getting better and better and has all-star potential. Rockets trail. And this is where you milk the clock. Yeah, that's the intelligent play here, Greg, no doubt. No reason to chuck up some garbage shot. Here's Joseph, and he's fouled pretty hard on that shot, but he's got the chance to pick up the points at the line. And you don't ever want to get into the habit of letting the offense get to the rim. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, that's the message they were sending with that foul. Nothing easy inside. He shot two free throws in the game, made one, and missed one. And on the season, he's just a shade under 80 from the line. I'll bet he'd like to get that up over that mark. Shooting two. And the first one at the line is good. And Joseph drops them both. And here are the Rockets now. It's a three-point game. There's the screen. Turner with the steal. One second left. And that's how to make an impact with defense. Once the steal is made, you know they're going to be scattered. And that's going to do it for the third quarter. Pacers lead by five. We'll be back shortly live from Houston, Texas. All right, we welcome you back to what's been a hard-fought battle. Fourth quarter should be good. And it's the Rockets with the ball. Trailing by five. Paul and Harden, the star-studded backcourt. Nene is out there with Luke and Baamute. And it's Tucker in at the three slot. That's the five for Houston right now. Now here's Paul. Shot clock at six. It's rebounded by Indiana. Turner's got rebound number 15 here tonight. Stevenson dishes to Young over Mbamuta. The nine-footers on the mark. And it's 13 points for Thaddeus Young. Boy, I tell you what, Thaddeus Young finding a nice little groove here. And when that's the case, hey, if you're his teammates, make sure he gets the rock. Screen by Baamute. Paul for three. Offensive rebound. And the shot's good from Nene. And there's no quit when it comes to battling there until the final whistle. What a putback. Understands his role, does his job, and he did it right there, Greg. The timing couldn't have been better. Now, here's Bogdanovich. Misses the three, and he used the pump fake well there, but he couldn't capitalize. Harden against Stevenson. Harden kicks it to Tucker. From deep. Out there, one of the Indiana leaders has been cut down to just two points with the bucket from James Harden. 
So pretty to watch when Harden gets room to shoot from three. I mean, his release, picture perfect. I think it's going in every time. Now, here is Young. And there is a big time jam as he slams it right over Bahamute. With his athleticism, dunks like that are pedestrian for Young. And that last replay, courtesy of Under Armour. Another Unleash Chaos moment. Tucker with the ball, now guarded by Bogdanovich. Nene, the screen. Here's Tucker, and it's sent back by Turner. Nene, the screen. Here's Harden. Good work defensively by Turner. Pacers leading by four. Joseph, the pass to Young. In it goes for the eighth time in ten tries. And they're beginning to just flat out fall apart defensively right now, especially on the interior. Yeah, and that's four straight field goals now, Greg. They've allowed from point blank range. Can't happen. Here is Harden. That is Young picking up that last pass. There's the screen. Nene with the screen on Stevenson. Over to the wing. Houston needs to get a shot. Harden. That shot. I don't believe what I just How saw in the right world. there. <laughs> Timeout called the Pacers. Houston making some changes. Clint Capella comes in for Nene. And it's Anderson in for P.J. Tucker. The Pacers also changing it up. Victor Oladipo, he's jacked in for Lance Stevenson. And it's Collison in for Corey Joseph. Okay, well, let's go down to David Aldridge for a report from the sideline. Kevin, I was able to listen in on Nate McMillan talking to his team. He was very adamant in the huddle. He said, don't let up now. Stay aggressive and do the things that have gotten us this far. We're almost there. Guys? Young outside. Turner with the screen. Young dishes to Turner. Count it. And the Pacers lead by three. Man, have they been effective at getting the ball inside. I tell you, we're taking a look at some real deficiencies defensively. I mean, they've given up five straight good looks in the paint. And low percentage look on that one. Not sure what he was thinking. I agree with you. Not a good shot. Not good offense. They can get a much better look than that. But they're going to need to be patient to do so. Gentlemen, two shots, two shots. That's good from Oladipo. Trevor Ariza's checked in for Houston. Second free throw, no good. Yeah, the main thing here, though, guys, is just to make sure you get a two-possession game now. Back to Paul. To the inside. Stolen away. Nice job to interrupt the alley-oop attempt there. Collison kicks to Bogdanovich. Launches a three. Collison, no good. You know what, though? Sometimes you can be too open. I think it may have surprised him, and that's why he missed. Harden can't hit. Indiana leading by four. Here's Bogdanovich. The kick out to Oladipo. Another shot. And the rejection by Harden. They shoot again. And the Pacers can't get it to go. Houston's gotten off four three-pointers in the final quarter, and two of them have fallen. 
and he comes up with the deuce. Man, he's having quite the quarter, converting at a really high percentage. Indiana's gotten off to an 0 for 2 start from downtown here in the fourth quarter. Ball against Collison. Young in the corner. And the Pacers can't get it to go. Rockets have gone 5 of 11 from the field in the fourth quarter. And the foul called on Boyan Bogdanovich. That's his first foul. Now here's Paul. The dish to a reason. Harden inside the three-point line. That one a little long. And you know what? You can't get a better screen. Frees him up beautifully, but he just fails to capitalize. Clearly a frustrating missed opportunity there. Perfect screen. Got him the space he needed, but he bricked it. Collison against Paul. Here's the screen. Capella with it. Pass to a reason. Lock at six. And it's sent back by Turner. Oh, these arms of Turner just go on forever. I mean, which is part of the reason he's able to rack up the block shots that he does. Lockett's trail by four. They need a bucket in a big way here to regain some confidence. A reason a lot. Talk about hurting your team. I mean, he just can't get anything to go out there. Now the pass to Oladipo. James Harden with the rebound. This has been a rough, turbulent outing for him so far. Fortunately, the rest of his team has bailed him out. Indiana leading by four. Oladipo, the pass to Young. He dishes it to Collison. Back to Young. Pass to Bogdanovich. The shot misses. Good work defensively by Capella. And here's Anderson from the arc. That shot missing. So the Pacers will take it the other way. Here's Collison. Screened by Young. Collison dishes to Oladipo. Again, Oladipo missing. Houston's gone a disappointing 2 of 6 on three point attempts here in the fourth. It's good. Harden's got 10 points now just in this quarter. He's simply a machine at the offensive end. I wonder how far behind they'd be if he wasn't having this kind of quarter. Collison kicks to Turner. And it's the Rockets on the break. And there's a reason that's good on the assist by Paul. Paul's got his sixth assist on the night. Indiana's gone ice cold from three-point land all four since the start of the final quarter. Collison kicks to Bogdanovich. Turner with a screen on Ariza. Bogdanovich, an easy layup after coming off the pick. 16 points for Miles Turner. Nice look there from Bogdanovich. The shooter keeping an eye peeled and open for the open man. To the paint. And the dunk by Capella. Oh, I like how Capella stays one step ahead of the posse on defense. Has a real good sense of body control. Collison kicks to Bogdanovich. Indiana moving it around. Here's Oladipo. The kick out to Collison. And it's off from three-point range. And the rebound battle split evenly thus far. Yeah, tit for tat on the glass. Just one more aspect of what's been a very closely contested ball game here. The shot's good from Paul. He's definitely turned things around in this game. I mean, he was more of a background player in the first half. He's jumped center stage now. Turner with the screen. Collison against Paul. And Oladipo kicks to Bogdanovich. And they come right back with their own three-pointer. Bogdanovich has got it all tied up now for Indiana. Collison against Paul. The teardrop falls in. This is a fantastic performance in this half. He didn't play as well in the first, but you know, you just know with this guy, he's always ready to turn it around. 
Now here's Collison. Feeds to Oladipo. It's Bogdanovich on the wing. Oladipo sets the screen for Bogdanovich. Foul call that time on the way up. That'll give him two chances at the free throw line here. Threat of the shot got him off balance. Nice work from Bogdanovich. And what's your take, guys, in the hustle stats for the Rockets? Guys, how about all the second chance points they've been able to convert throughout the game? They haven't wasted time getting the ball up the court tonight either, and it's resulted in a lot of fast break points. Shooting two. First free throw is good. And you know, Bogdanovich played for 10 years in Europe before coming to the NBA. Just now coming into his prime, but he's got a lot of pro experience. Gordon's checked in for Houston. And good on the second, so he makes them both. Houston's gone beyond the arc seven times here in the fourth and been successful three times. Screen by Capella. Gordon kicks to Harden. No good with the triple. Indiana's gotten some tough luck from three-point range. In the fourth quarter, they've hit just one of six from deep. Screen by Young. Here's Turner. Foul call that time on the way up. That'll give him two chances at the free throw line here. At six foot eleven and 243 pounds, Turner is physically imposing. He's a big man, though, with a delicate shooting touch from outside. Gentlemen, two shots. Two shots. Drops the first one, and that gives them the lead. And the Rockets making a change here. Paul's checked in. So he goes two for two at the lock, and it's a two-point ball game. What a clutch performance. He loves being in these situations. Just relishes the opportunity. A lot of guys say they do, but you can see it in his face. He truly does. Now here's Anderson. Back to Paul. Capella with a screen on Collins. Just four to shoot. And the dunk by Capella. For the floor awareness of Chris Paul. Got to respect that. I mean, whenever one of his guys is open, he's getting the ball to him quickly and on time. Here's Young. It's stolen by Ariza. Looking for Anderson. He gets it there. That is Young grabs the miss. Young's got his sixth rebound on the night. And Oladipo has it in the corner. Over Harden. Oladipo misses. And out of rhythm offensively. But he continues to work at it. Yeah, you know what? I think eventually he will find his rhythm because he is off right now. But all it takes is one hoop. And you're back in rhythm. And this atmosphere is bananas electric in here I mean that was a tremendous shot this crowd all over it. turned up you had a foul to give there but you'd rather not have it cost your team points I agree I mean you would have been better off using it on the floor and not on the shot but the foul had to come either way so it is what it is First free throw missing for him. We'll see if he can nail the second. And James Harden is clearly an MVP caliber talent. No doubt about that. A triple double threat who really is a stat sheet stuffer supreme.
and he does get the second one. And that narrows the gap to one. There's 48 seconds left to play in the final quarter. They'll be trying to take as much time off the clock as they can. Exactly. Expect to see longer possessions from this point on. Now, here's Bogdanovich. Dishes it to Turner. Pocket six. Sinks it. Major dominance, and it comes so easily for him. Fantastic at getting to his spots on the floor. Now a timeout called by Houston. They're trailing by three. We've got 28 seconds left in the fourth quarter. And now we've got a moment for our Jordan player of the game, Miles Turner. And in terms of his shooting, this has been one of the more accurate performances you'll ever see. I mean, he's been in constant motion, creating a lot of good looks for himself. But, but still, even when you're wide open, you expect to miss some of the time. And that has not been the case here tonight. This guy has made everything. Here is Harden. Four seconds separating the shot and game clocks. Trying to go for an alley-oop, but excellent defense in anticipation there to stop it. And he commits the intentional foul. Two shots. first one and that gives them a four point cushion. Well you go back to Darren Collison's career at UCLA very distinguished and he's turned himself into a starting caliber pro too. And he hits both free throws here. So now it's a five point game. Yeah, two possession game now. I mean those were really important foul shots. Now a timeout called by Houston. They trail by five. 23 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Twenty-three seconds left in the fourth quarter. And, you know, the defense did a good job playing through the pick. Outstanding contest on the shot. You have to foul, but I'm sure they would have liked to foul someone different. Yeah, but Greg, they didn't really have a, another oh, option. I mean, Two I thought shots. they did a nice job getting it in his hands and making sure he was the guy who'd go to the line. And he cannot get the first one to drop. Tough one to miss. And he ends up making the second, and that increases their lead to six. Well, they're really making a point of keeping the ball moving around. That's the key. The D can't focus on one player, and no matter what anybody tells you, that ball will always move quicker than the defender. And this is why you love Ariza, Kevin. Doesn't shy away from taking and making the big shot. It's the first, and that gives them a four-point cushion. And he hits both free throws here. So now it's a five-point game. Tell you what, that's a clutch moment for him right there, delivering at a big time in this game. On the wing, Harden, from past the arc, knocks down the three. And you know the ball's going to Harden when the game's tight. Terrific at delivering and producing down the stretch. You know what? Smart foul. you got to try and extend the game. Sure. It's not over. The clock is as much a problem for them as the score is right now, so they've got to try to manage it. Gentlemen, troop shot. Loop shot. Good 
Good on the first, and that makes it a three-point lead. And the second free throw, no good. A tough break there. So a close game sees Indiana take this one. This win, such a tremendous emotional boost for him. Really an accomplishment and crazy finish <laughs> to take a road game like this and simply deflate an entire building. And now we'll send it over to David Aldridge, who is standing by courtside. David. Kevin, thank you. Victor, what does tonight's performance say about the confidence of this team? Uh, just work pretty good. We play great together. You know, um, and we play well together as a team. So when we do that, it's easier for us to be teams. Victor Wundamatha, thank you, my man. Back to you, Kevin. All right, David. Great job. Thanks so much. Thank you for joining us. That'll do it for now. For Clark Kellogg, Greg Anthony, and David Aldridge, this is Kevin Harlan along with our terrific 2K Sports crew thanking you for tuning in. So long.